welcome. Today I want to share with you sort of some reasoning why I'm making a change, but also my thoughts on language lessons for living from Master Books Level 7, and I'm also going to give you a peek inside. Welcome to Learning with Boys. My name is Rachel. I am a homeschool mom of four boys. I have graduated too, and we just finished up our 16th year of homeschooling, and I will have a seventh grader, and I'll also have a senior. But I'm gonna be talking about mostly my seventh grader this coming year. I have shared picks and our choices for both of those boys, and I will link that below. But I wanna talk about our change in curriculum and just sort of my thought process there and what interest me about language lessons for living level seven. So like I said, we've been homeschooling a long time. I have shared lots of videos about language arts and what we have used. We actually used the same curriculum for all my boys in the younger years. So those two curriculums were Shirley English and Winston Grammar. And I feel like both of them gave my boys a strong grammar foundation, so it would be a little easier to steer off of those curriculums. Over the years, we have used other things also. And this past year for my sixth grader, now going into seventh, we used Fix It. So I'm also gonna mention that. I'm also gonna mention Phonetic Zoo for spelling because we will finish off those two that we didn't get finished this past year. And I'll also mention how we're using Phonetic Zoo a little bit differently than originally. So, but I really want to give you mostly my thoughts and comments about language lessons for living level seven. Now, we did try master books, language arts, like in grade two, you know, in grade two, you're still learning to spell, to read, to write. And it just was not because he was my fourth one. So it was my fourth child that did that. It was just, I already had in my mindset how things should be flowing and it wasn't that way. <laughs> so I wanted to teach a specific way and it wasn't correlating with the language lessons for living that level to that year. So we sort of skimmed through it and did some of the work pages, but I never did finish it and I never went back to it. And I really never thought I would. So. <laughs> That is something I try not to say, and I probably am guilty of saying it, like I will never use this curriculum again. I don't think I said that, but um, that's one reason not to say that, is because it didn't work, but now that they have this level seven out, I was given the opportunity to look at it from Masterbooks and sort of review it, and I was like, this looks totally different than I remember, of course, second grade and seventh are two different things. So if you've been using this curriculum, I would love to know your thoughts if you have gone into that seventh and is there a, a difference? Is there a big jump? So I have, so I don't know what fifth, sixth or any of that looks like. So I haven't even looked into it, but I was excited for this. And another reason is this son is, you know, they're all different, and he is one that doesn't mind writing. He doesn't mind words. Um, my oldest was more of an introvert, so that was a little bit of a struggle. But he likes to write. He likes to read. So that is another thing. After looking at this, it sort of drew me to it. And just a thought. If you're thinking about making changes and you're not sure about stepping out, you know, he's going into middle school. He's not in high school yet. This isn't like gonna be detrimental to his education here if I make this change and we enjoy this book this school year and maybe go back to what we have been using, which is a majority of IEW. But we may like it and wanna stay with it. I don't know if they have a book eight out yet, but I have looked at their nine and that looks really good too. I think nine came out and then seven. So I am going to, talk a little bit about that, but I wanted to sort of explain my thought process on why I feel okay about changing and why I feel okay about this level. Now, I do wanna to read to you the, the course description, which um, I appreciate them putting in there. I'm gonna grab my glasses. <laughs> 
Um, I can see it okay, but this helps. Um, language lessons for living education level seven begins the journey to prepare students for high school level communication. This level continues to strengthen their faith so that they can be effective communicators for Christ. Students will apply lessons to their own lives and learn how to share what they have learned with others. They will learn and practice foundational communication skills through essays, summaries, and oral presentations. They will learn how to apply grammar and punctuation rules in their writing. Students will be well prepared for a successful communication through studying etiquette, verbal, and nonverbal communications and world view. So um, I think just the Christ-centered part really encouraged me. You know, they get to this age and this stage, and I just feel like it's so, so important to um, emphasize that. I feel like some parents step away because they don't want to feel pushy, but if it's just a part of your life and I don't feel like it is pushy, you know, I feel like we're just continuing on learning about the things of God, continuing to build our faith in our worldview of the God and his word. So I'm excited about what is being taught in here. I am going to give you a little bit more look into it. I do want to mention the beginning really gives you a huge overview of everything that's in here. Um, it breaks down every lesson, um, what you are doing each day. It's pretty much the same thing. And I think that is how it is in the younger years. They have the same thing day one, day two, day three, and day four. And then day five is a review. So I'll show you a little bit of that too. Um, up there is 180 days approximately 40 minutes is what they say. So I we haven't used it yet. So I will be giving a review and my final thoughts probably a couple times throughout the year on how it's going. Of course, they have the daily schedule like most master books curriculum do, which is nice. It's divided into nine weeks, nine week segments. Okay, so now they did suggest that you have a specific book that could go along with this. But when I looked at this at the homeschool convention that I went to in early May, which is Teach Them Diligently, I asked the lady, you know, do I need this book? And she said, no, you pretty much are asked to read out of the Bible or this book. And I thought, well, he's used to reading out of his Bible, so I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So, and I'll show you an example of probably what you'll be reading a lot of here in a minute. So, all right, let's turn this around and take a look um, at a lesson, maybe a couple lessons. So, okay, here is, I'm gonna go ahead and open it to the first lesson. And lesson one starts with a quote study. Now they do have like poem study, they have art study, they have, I think some hymns and even some places that they, they do. This first one is a quote from The Great Alaskan Dinosaur Adventure by Buddy Davis. Now, I did also purchase this book, not just because I seen it mentioned, and then I was curious and looked it up and it looked really good. So I did purchase that. Might read it with my son this school year. So just sort of a quote study, and then let's study the quote, talking about communication, and then it wants you to read the quote again and answer some questions, thinking about the scene that could have happened before or after, and then maybe write your own idea in a paragraph form. Then there's some word study, which is pretty much your vocabulary that you'll be. It also has you start a list of independent reading, which they have that available in the back that you can keep your list. I'll show you that in a minute. A scripture to memorize for the week. And then this is day two, which is grammar. And today they're just reviewing your sentences with subject and predicate some work there. So it starts pretty much out as basic review. Um, and then day three is gonna be your communication day, gives you some effective ways to think about communication, and then talks about capitalization, as you rewrite some sentences, and marks. Then here is some courtesy introduction just to how to have good etiquette, which was mentioned earlier and that could be verbal or nonverbal. Okay, and then day four is worldview. 
the Bible. Just giving you an overview of the Bible in English, its authors, um, a verse, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Um, and then just some questions, how many different authors wrote the Bible, different languages it was written in, and then to, to write out the verse. And then this is where it gets into reading the Bible, Genesis 1, 1 through 10. And then you're going to write a summary of what you wrote. And then I want you to be sure to complete the sentence with proper punctuation and correct spelling. And do not copy word for word of the passage. So you're able to go over that with them. And it also lets you do a sketch if that is something that you would prefer to do. I don't know. My seventh grader will do that. But... Um, I know there's lots of artsy kids out there. He does enjoy drawing, just not sure on that aspect. But, and then like I said, day five will be review. You're gonna go over your scripture verse from that week. Um, you'll have your spelling index cards. I, I think it has you write those earlier on. And then you review, do the word study match, some grammar review, and some communication and world view. Okay, here is lesson 11. This is a picture study of the flood. I want you to study the picture, read Genesis 6, some verses, and then maybe think about a prayer that might have been prayed if you had been on the ark. So, um, and I think these are gonna probably be your vocabulary words. And here they have you write the definitions out, so vocabulary and spelling. You can also write them on an index card. And I don't know, you may wanna do both, but I would probably just pick one or the other, however your child would study best. Um, then memory verse, update your reading list. And over here on day two would be grammar, object complements, indirect objects, whenever that. And then continue to have exercises for that. And then day three would be communication. Topic sentence goes over that with you. And then it looks like you're getting into some writing that you're going to be having to think about. It's gonna have you write a topic sentence. Topic sentence for number four on the previous page. And okay, so the idea is on the previous page what your topic sentence would be. And another courtesy idea. That would be verbal or nonverbal. Okay, and then this is day four, which is a worldview, the Old Testament, Bible, books of the Bible, their topics of the Bible. These are the first five books of the Bible, tell us the accounts of. And then it wants you to be filling out, probably answering questions from what you are reading up here, each book of the Bible. And then use your dictionary, the following words in your dictionary, and write the definition, Genesis, Exodus, and Holy. Okay? And then reading some from your Bible, and again, writing a paragraph summary. So this day actually looks a little bit busier than maybe some of the other days. And then day five would be your review. So you're going to review your vocabulary, um, question um, your grammar review about your indirect object and direct objects communication review, and your worldview, okay? So that is another example. Okay, I hope that was helpful to look through that. I do wanna mention two other things. We are gonna finish up Fix It, Robin Hood. He's like on 18, I think there's 30 or 36. So I'm gonna go ahead and have him finish that off because I don't know, this could be something we come back to. Um, so I wanna just sort of stay on top of that a little bit. And also we have been using Phonetic Zoo from IEW with the spelling cards, but we haven't been using the audio. So I do wanna let you know that I've done a whole video on how it actually works. I've mentioned it you know, throughout the last couple of years that we've been, he's on B, he didn't finish it this school year, but he's on, I think 19, it's not this one he's on, but I think it was 19 and there's actually like 40 some. But I will tell you like every, five lessons, there's a personal spelling, which is more to go over words that may have been in your own writing or something you were reading that was new to you. We've never done that, so I will tell you that. But I think we're going to go ahead and try to keep doing this just to keep his mind writing and spelling. He does enjoy 
that. So I want him to be, you know, fluent in his spelling. So we're going to continue that. Now, I'm excited about trying this curriculum. I do want to say that, you know, it may work for my son, but, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm like, this is the curriculum because I don't know. We haven't used it yet. I'm excited about it and we'll be excited about sharing reviews throughout the year and a final review. So if you are interested in homeschool content, I enjoy doing past and present. So subscribe if you haven't joined us. If this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That would encourage me. I do appreciate you all watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we will talk to you again soon.